Hello, my darlings. Welcome back. Today is September 17th, 2024, and this is the reading of the Minor Prophets chapter 5 in the book of Hosea. I've titled this study, Where Do We Take Those We Lead? So let's get started. Hello, hello, hello. I send all of you who have decided to join me in furthering the study of the minor prophet Hosea a great big hug. But of course, first let's recognize that God is good always and in everything. As we further ourselves into this audio, let's put at the forefront of our minds that we ask only for God's voice to speak to each of us. May my perspective and the words I use become obsolete as his guidance and wisdom take their place. He has a specific message for each of us and through prayer, he will guide us in order to apply it as we serve others and become more according to his will and not ours. May we each die to self daily. May we choose to become empowered by his spirit alone and ignore all other false options that do nothing but weigh us down spiritually. Please allow me to share with you a perspective on Hosea chapter 5. We can probably all agree that it feels amazing to have a team of friends and family that cheer us on as we make choices in life. After all, the feeling of being empowered and empowering others becomes sweet music to our ears and ego. And I repeat, and ego. (laughs) Don't we all enjoy having a cheer squad chanting out our name as we chant back theirs? We practice this activity in our families, church communities, and workplace. The feeling of being winners is often determined by how loud our name is chanted out. We've all been to a pep rally or we've all been to a recognition meeting or we've all um, done this in our family when somebody does something great. We've all, most likely, I don't like to ever say all or never, have done that where you chant somebody's name loudly and everybody gets excited and it becomes like a cheer. But what if, as a group, we become so accustomed and focused on receiving and emitting the sounds of endless, be it well-intentioned, heartfelt, and joyous cheers that we collectively achieved drowning out God's voice? What if in doing so, we were so far removed that we no longer heard God's cheerful voice of encouragement? Are we training our palate to sense the taste of public recognition as sweet and the removal of self in order to recognize God's power above all as bitter? What does the book of Hosea say about the responsibility laid before all leaders to recognize and lead others to recognize God's power above all else? Allow me to share with each of you these keys takeaways. These were put onto my heart. God will give you your own, but we can share. Number one, have we come to terms with the fact that if any of our actions have influence over anyone we are ordained leaders that is written in by god's perfect and divine placement of each of us in time families friendships communities and places of worship this is to say if you're a mother you're a leader if you're an elder sibling you're a leader if you're a group leader at work you're a leader if you are the youngest person in your building and it's full of elderly elderly people, you're a leader. If you are able, body abled, and you see someone who's not so body abled crossing the street, 
You are meant to be their leader to help them cross. That is what I'm saying. We all are leaders. We will see this in Acts 20, 28. Number two, do we plan our focus, time, energy, and resources to achieve personal growth? Or do we pray for his will to be done as we focus our time, energy, and resources to achieve kingdom growth? This is seen in Proverbs 16, 9. Number three, do we fully understand the personal, generational, and communal impact of continuous sin? Is it clear to us that God will respect our choice to ignore his calling and leave us in the pit of spiritual quicksand built of our sins? A place where it is difficult, if not nearly impossible, to repent? This is in Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. Boy, I'm going to go back to that one. May none of us ever find ourselves so far removed from God that we find it difficult to repent. We all know someone, if God's will is that we are not that one, that says, I haven't seen my aunt in 40 years because we just don't know how to come back from the one little argument we had. May we not be that person that are so far removed because the tendency is there as a human. But may we not be those people that are so far removed from God that we don't know how to repent and come back to his open arms. Amen. As we deepen our relationship with God through these biblical audios, may he reveal other reflective questions to apply in your life and path. So, having shared that, let's read together all the above-mentioned Bible verses. Acts 20, 28. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. Proverbs 16, 9. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Amen. Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. Warnings against sin. Listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear your call. It is your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Amen. And this is Hosea chapter 5. The failure of Israel's leaders. Hear this, you priests. Pay attention, you leaders of Israel. Listen, you members of the royal family. Judgment has been handed down against you. For you have led the people into a snare by worshiping the idols at Mizpah and Tabor. You have dug a deep pit to trap them at Acacia Grove. But I will settle with you for what you have done. I know what you are like, O Ephraim. You cannot hide yourself from me, O Israel. You have left me as a prostitute leaves her husband. You are utterly defiled. Your deeds won't let you return to your God. You are a prostitute through and through, and you do not know the Lord. The arrogance of Israel testifies against her. Israel and Ephraim will stumble under their load of guilt. Judah, too, will fall with them. When they come with their flocks and herds to offer sacrifices to the Lord, they will not find him because he has withdrawn from them. They have betrayed the honor of the Lord, bearing children that are not his. Now their false religion will devour them along with their wealth. Sound the alarm in Gibeah. Blow the trumpet in Ramah. Raise the battle cry in Bethaven. 
lead on into battle, O warriors of Benjamin. One thing is certain, Israel, on your day of punishment, you will become a heap of rubble. The leaders of Judah have become like thieves, so I will pour my anger on them like a waterfall. The people of Israel will be crushed and broken by my judgment because they are determined to worship idols. I will destroy Israel as a moth consumes wool. I will make Judah as weak as rotten wood. When Israel and Judah saw how sick they were, Israel turned to Assyria, to the great king there, but he could neither help nor cure them. I will be like a lion to Israel, like a strong young lion to Judah. I will tear them to pieces. I will carry them off and no one will be left to rescue them. Then I will return to my place until they admit their guilt and turn to me. For as soon as trouble comes, they will earnestly search for me. Amen. May we never, ever find ourselves in that position. And may we never lead our family, loved ones, and those that are put before us astray. Mm. These are some love nuggets from my heart to yours. Amen and amen to all the beautiful words of wisdom we find each time we read his written word. When we do so together, even even if it is through a virtual media, we are searching to make his kingdom greater, one act of service at a time. May we be blessed with many more opportunities to learn his word. So now at this point, I'd like to invite you to receive the most beautiful gift that is yours for the taking, eternal life. If you are ready to do so, please say this prayer aloud. And let me encourage you to not let one minute go by. If you haven't given your life to Christ, don't wait. This is your moment. God has ordained this moment for you to become his co-heir along with Christ. God, Father, may your will be done as I recognize that I need you to guide me towards a new life. I have sinned. I now repent truly and surrender to your will. From now on, I will put my wishes aside so you can make changes within me. I proudly recognize before all that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. And because of his sacrifice, your love, my repentance and faith, today and forever, I am your heir and beloved child. I now can live eternally in your kingdom. I ask that your will be done in me always in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. So my darlings. Thank you each again for allowing me to enter your personal space through these audios. Let us remind each other that when we speak encouragement over others, let us first and always recognize God's power and grace over the situation and any gifts being utilized. Because what we don't want to do is boost egos. We want to make his kingdom great and greater. May the chance of cheer represent and the gifts used be a form of worship towards God. May we never lead ourselves or others to a place of spiritual quicksand. May our actions and words take on his will because only he can empower us and others. May we recognize solely his powerfully wise voice, Christ's life examples, and the energizing leadership of Holy Spirit as we make his kingdom greater here on earth. I love you guys always. Please remember to share these videos so that together we take his word to all the nations, 
We are all commissioned to do that. So when you do that, I continue to do my part, you do your part, and together we are part of the Great Commission. Bye-bye.